Hey, check this castle out behind me. It's the Mondrique Castle. It's been here for two or three hundred years in the city of Barcelona, Spain. You heard it right, Spain. What kind of fish have they got over here? Well, I didn't know it, but they've got largemouth bass in a number of lakes right across this country. And we're here on the shores of the Mediterranean. And just do a little sightseeing today, but we have to drive to Cass Bay where there's a bass tournament about two hours out of Barcelona, and it is like the European Championship. It's going to be exciting. Gary and Beverly Yamamoto from Texas invited my brother Wayne and I to be the token Canadian team at this year's tournament. should be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Coming up. Bob and Wayne are off across the pond to beautiful Spain to take part in the European Bass Championship Tournament. Friends Gary and Beverly Yamamoto from Texas invited the boys to be guests at this year's tournament held on Lake Caspe, two hours from downtown Barcelona. Ninety-two teams from 12 countries will vie for the most prestigious Bass Championship title in all of Europe. Lake Caspe is well known for its population of largemouth bass, walleye, and giant catfish. With over 550 kilometers of shoreline, this rocky reservoir turns out to be a daunting challenge for most of the participants, including the Canadians. But with some of the most exquisite untouched landscape found anywhere in the world, this is one experience that is well worth the price of admission. I called in and told the boss I was going fishing today. I thought you were sick. Um, well, no. Shh. Hiya, boss. This is Bob Azumi's Real Fishing oh, Show. <laughs> Real Fishing is brought to you by Chevy Trucks. Canadian Tire, let's get started. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water. And Tim Horton. Oh, well, that's real fishing right there, folks. <laughs> Who would have ever thought I'd be standing here in Barcelona, Spain? I'm here with Juan Arnell. Juan, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. I'm looking forward to why I'm here, and that's uh, for the Caspe Bass Tournament, the championship tournament for all of Europe. And yes, I said bass. Uh, John, you work for uh, Gary Yamamoto, uh -huh. and uh, you've also authored a book on bass fishing here in Spain. Now, how many lakes um, in Spain have bass? Large oh, there are hundreds of lakes from the good bass fishing. No uh, kidding. And but one of the most popular is Caspe for his huge population of healthy, nice bass. It's really been a, a lot of fun. We just got in yesterday late afternoon from Toronto. My brother Wayne is here, and Wayne and I are fishing as a team in this tournament. And I know that Gary and Beverly Yamamoto are, are in there as a team. There's teams from all over the world. You're fishing as well. Uh, yeah. And I'm excited. I didn't even know they had bass here in Spain until about a year ago, so this is going to be a lot of fun. We checked out some of the scenery in Barcelona and uh, saw some wonderful cathedrals and the architect work on the buildings here is just second to none. It's uh, obviously hundreds and hundreds of years old and mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty amazing. What do you say we get packed up and head to the lake? Oh yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, this is it. We're here. We've seen the lake, Wayne. You fished it. I need an assessment because I was over in Detroit fishing a tournament, so I didn't get the official practice. What did you find out here at Cass Bay? Well, have you ever heard of Xander's? Well, 
Uh, they're here in big, big numbers. You mean the fish that looks just like a North American uh, walleye? Just like a one. This is an incredible walleye lake, and it was good for bass, and it probably is. But right now, they they weren't biting. We had three days of practice, and it was tough out there. Now you're with your wife, Jay. That's right. And the Yamamoto's, Gary and Bev. It's going to be a tough bite. It's a clear uh, sort of desert reservoir. Water's clear. I think the fish are suspended somewhere. Now a keeper here is 14 inches at the fork of the tail. That's right. How many keepers did you catch in three days? Oh, well, between the, I guess, uh, six of us fishing, we caught one keeper. It was off to registration in downtown Cass Bay at the local theater. Wayne and I already felt like we were winners for receiving a plaque for just showing up. Por favor, un aplauso para Bob y Wayne to me. True Spanish hospitality. There's nothing like getting on the water a few hours before the sun comes up, getting organized. Luckily, I brought some Tim Hortons coffee with me to make in the hotel room at about 4 a.m. just to kickstart the early morning. Yeah, it does. There we go. What do you got? Don't know. Let's hope what it. have we got? Feels like a walleye and looks like a walleye. <laughs> or Xander. Okay. Well, there seems to be a lot of these in Cass Bay. Now, uh, I caught one a few minutes ago that was, you know, in that six-pound category. Then you had another small one just like mm -hmm. this. And, you know, in practice, Bob, we're getting them up to one. Arnell caught one at 1035, and he says they get a lot bigger than that. They're talking about, uh, talking about 10 kilo walleyes, which is incredible. Seeing all sorts of activity on the depth finder here. When we return, the tournament is underway, and with 92 teams competing for the championship title, things are getting interesting. I don't think this one's <laughs> going to measure either. They fight hard, though. Yeah, we need 14 inches. These Spanish largemouth fight hard. We're using light line here. Oh, it looks nice, though. Our little fat guy, hey? Nope. No. That's not going to work either. We need a 12 inch limit. That might just barely make yeah, it. Yeah, it's probably about 11 inches. Small tungsten drop shot weight. Small number one hook tied with a polymer. Uh, not on our line, and I'm using what six pound test. What do you use, Wayne? Eight? I'm using eight, yeah. And uh, just using little four inch worms here, and that's about it. Well, it's way in time. The organizers had everything set up and running smoothly. Even though we're in Europe, a tournament is still a tournament, and somebody always catches them. As predicted, the fishing was tough. Not one six-fish limit was brought to the scales on day one. Over one half of the field didn't weigh a keeper fish, including us. Let's take a look down under. With Mercury Outboards, number one on the water, Fish Eye View. Recent angler surveys have shown that over 75% of all anglers in Ontario are practicing catch and release on a regular basis. Over the last 10 years, substantially more fish have been released than in previous years. When practicing catch and release, there are a number of things you should consider for safe handling of fish. And it really depends on the experience of the angler, the species of fish that they're dealing with, and probably the size of fish that they're dealing with. Minimizing the amount of stress on a fish is critical. Land your catch as soon as possible. You don't want to fight them to exhaustion. Once the fish is landed, get it back into the water quickly, ensuring its survival. Every time you go fishing, you should be ready to, to catch and release fish. Have a pair of needle nose pliers to assist with removing your hook. Your camera ready if you want a picture and your net close by. 
If you know that you're going to be catching and releasing a large number of fish, you may want to consider using barbless hooks. The one critical thing in any release uh, technique is to make sure that you wet your hands ahead of time so you're not uh, removing the slime coat from the fish. It's important to remember that if you're out fishing and catch a fish in the closed season, the law requires you to release that fish immediately in a manner that causes least harm to the fish. Catch and release does work, and proper technique should be practiced in order to ensure that fish survives and benefits the sustainability of the fishery. Bob and Wayne are still looking for the big bass. Stay tuned. Here we are, day two. Fishing's really been tough. Wayne, I think one of the important things here today is that, that we got some ground to pick up. We blanked out yesterday along with half of the field. I guess 45 teams or so did not weigh a fish in. No, on the positive side, when it's that tough a bite, at least we can catch up in a hurry. All it takes is a couple of fish, one or two fish, and we're laughing. But we're just going to try to capitalize on the early morning bite. From what we understand, uh, the people that did weigh fish yesterday caught them early. In fact, yeah, typical clear mountain type of lake. Let's move on. It happens early, and it's over. Thirty feet. Uh, little wallaby. Uh huh. Drop shot and walleyes. Now there's something, Wayne. I don't think anybody in Canada is doing. Of course. <laughs> Certainly, I've been doing. We're not anything. in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and slot limit. That's a tiny one here. Eight hundred and twenty grams. One. Hmm. The fishing has been tough, but no one is out of it just yet. Stay tuned for the final day of the Caspe Bass Tournament. Well, here it is, day three at the Cast Bay Bass Tournament in Spain, and uh, it's it's beautiful morning. The weather's uh, fairly stable. There's a lot of arebas in the background. <laughs> They're getting a lot of boats launched here. The, the the folks behind us here, Wayne, Gary and Beverly Yamamoto, they came up in the stand. That's right. Gary got the big one yesterday, big fish at uh, about 1.7 kilos, which is uh, 
just uh, over three and a half to four pounds. He's got big fish of the day. All right. Now, this guy's consistent. He had it last year as well. You know, Wayne, we came up from the bottom of the pack with zero the first day to, with one fish, 800 and some odd grams to what, a 55th place? 50, from 90th to 50th. I guess. And uh, <laughs> Gary and Beverly came up to 15th place. With so two fish, yeah. With two fish. The leaders, I believe, have how many fish? They've probably got about four or five fish. Four or five fish. And first day leaders had... Uh, uh, from France, uh, zeroed yesterday, so they think, think they dropped to fifth place. What? Well, it's pretty amazing. And also, Paulo, who uh, works with Gary and Beverly mm -hmm. from uh, Italy, had two fish each day. He's been in fourth place now two days in a row. And uh, I'll tell you, there are teams here from Portugal, uh, Spain, Italy, France, Japan, France, USA, Canada even, a couple of Canadians. Yeah. And they really aren't doing very good. I'm not going to tell you who it is, though. So. Anyway, Wayne, shall we get set up and see what happens here? here better than those little coves way on the lake though you they're likely to be scattered at least in the coves when they turn on and they get one you know coves yeah but yeah. but here i think there's a few more fish you mm -hmm. i don't think so no no oh well good sign not a keeper, but... Yeah, it'd be a keeper in a Canadian tournament, close to a 12 mm -hmm. inches. It'd be 12, 12 and a quarter, if that. But. Some action, anyways. A lot better than yesterday morning. That's two to start with. He had a pretty dramatic two, didn't he? Big time. Yeah. A little... Just yeah. popping along here. Grow up. Come back. Quickly. Okay, so far the bass are winning, the elders are winning, <laughs> where are the elders? Here we go. Mr. Walleye, Mr. you Walleye. dropped it. Dropped it when we saw this Good spot. old drop shot. Yeah. Set on drop, no, on a tube. Whoops, take it easy on that good Shimano equipment. Like I say, got to pacify this on the belly here. Here we go. Ah, that feels good. They're incredible colors. They're different than walleye. A little more chrome to them, isn't it? I don't know. So they eat tubes. Yeah, they eat tubes. The tube walleye. Geez, all I can think of is a short lunch right now when I see that. I'll tell you the way Gary cooks those walleyes up. Man, man. That's been part of the highlight of the trap. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> <laughs> no excuse here, though. He has to talk. What do you got? All, All right. right. Lunker City. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that fish was on the break in 40 feet. Another classic cold front. I can't deeper. hold it close enough to make it look big. <laughs> What's the story, guys? You, you, you did go to game. Well, we went to a bank that was just ugly. <laughs> ugly? <laughs> ugly bank. Now, explain what an ugly bank is. That's like a nothing bank. Nothing, yeah. no, no, nothing no. bank. Just dirt. Really? Just, just dirt. And uh, we knew that there was walleye outside of there. And uh, yesterday we had quite a few hits. Today we had one hit. Wow. But that was the big one? Nice hit. Okay, Beverly, did you... 
partake in this bag of yes. fish? <laughs> you know, right before we saw you, we were on the wall, going down the wall right before the cove that you went into. Yes. And so the first, uh, I guess drop. the first, yeah, drop that I did, I caught the uh, second fish. All right. Well, we're going to stand by you guys because with your bag of fish, you make us look real good with everybody <laughs> here looking. Well, go away, in, guys. Way to right. go. Got Gary and Beverly Yamamoto have been consistent at the Cast Bay Tournament over the last few years. They have been in the money every time they visit Spain to fish this prestigious tournament. Despite our lackluster performance, the experience was second to none. A unique site on a hill overlooking the lake was a monastery built in the 1700s. This beautiful structure was bombed during the Spanish Civil War. It was time to pack up and head back to the village of Caspe. The most amazing sunset reminded me of what a great adventure this trip really was. At the awards banquet, a local Spanish team took the title with eight bass weighing 15 and a half pounds. De un caspebas. En este año 2002, los ganadores han sido David Despac y Darío El Camín. They don't have siestas, but they just mysteriously disappear into the woodwork from uh, what is it about uh, one, noon o'clock, noon to <laughs> noon o'clock, <laughs> or whatever, to noon till two. Bob, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Beverly; she's got her game face on. <laughs> I got a fish. Yeah! Woo! 